Hey there and welcome to another episode of Sinu. It's been, uh, well, not so long since my last episode. Uh, actually, last weekend I did uh, a bit of a live stream in case you haven't seen it. I'm gonna include the link in the description. We've uh, streamed for like two and a half hours and uh, we worked on a bit of a custom bridge that turned out quite nice. Uh, and in fact, you're gonna see it uh, throughout uh, the episode in just uh, a few minutes. But um, as we take a look at uh, what we built so far, from the airport, which by no means is finished. We have a long way to go here. But uh, since I was you know, short on time as usual, uh, I decided to just go a little bit away from the airport for now and worked on, you know, well, this is somewhat airport related. Uh, we're gonna be working on an artificial reef. And then uh, later on in this episode, we're gonna be working on uh, the neighborhood that's adjacent to the airport. So that uh, hopefully that will, uh, you know, boost our, our need for planes because right now there are not that many planes landing. In fact, there's zero planes landing. Uh, I need to figure out a way to, you know, get, um, I was I actually mentioned this during the live stream. I need to figure out a way to potentially uh, block ships from allowing passengers in. So right now, the only way people can get into the city is via, you know, boats, but, um, I don't necessarily, you know, I was thinking maybe I can just boost uh, uh, people using planes if I just completely block ships. And uh, for some reason, they still, you know, people still seem to be getting into the island, even though there's no passenger ships anymore. I need to do a, lot of, a little bit of testing on this, uh, to be honest. But uh, in the meantime, let me talk about what I'm doing on screen right here. Uh, as you can see, we're working on a bit of a coral reef. And uh, if you've never heard of this concept of artificial reefs, and I'm by no means, I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm just gonna get that straight. Um, usually what um, what people do or organizations do or governments, I don't necessarily know who you know orchestrates all this, but um, it's common for, uh, for people to just sink, you know, old, planes or even ships or aircraft carriers or uh, I think in New York they even sunk some old subway cars and uh, the the goal of this is for wildlife to sort of take over and use all these uh, metal structures as uh, as a you know home and it just uh, creates a bit of an ecosystem around it that uh, apparently helps a lot uh, with you know, with the marine wildlife for the, for the most part. So what I'm doing here is I resize the water, as you can see, uh, this is just temporary so that I can place everything uh, more comfortably. Having the water in just makes things look uh, a little bit uh, more complicated. And uh, all these uh, bushes and uh, just clusters of corals that I'm placing down are gonna be somewhat visible once, you know, I bring the water up. I was trying really hard not to have the tails of these planes come up. And by the way, these uh, old broken planes uh, are the ones that we use on Arrowhead. Uh, they were created by Beast Google House and it's part of the junkyard uh, set or something like that. Uh, and in a moment, you're going to see a, a significant, uh, a very unique uh, uh, plane <laughs> that I'm going to put on these uh, barges. Uh, by the way, these barges are a little bit, uh, a little bit buggy to say the least. I mean, the I don't know if you can see the texture here. Uh, it's a similar problem to some of the curbs from King Leno that we used to use a long time ago. It's almost as if, I mean, what happens is every time you rotate them, the light hits the texture in a weird way. So if you rotate them differently, it's just completely opaque. So, and, and there's two versions of it for some reason, one darker and one lighter. I decided to go half and half I don't know why, now that I'm looking at this footage, I may come back and change it because it, it does look a little bit odd. And uh, you probably also notice that uh, there's like little steps. It's not like perfectly flat. The reason why I did that, even though it looks a little bit odd, is to simply avoid sea fighting uh, from the textures, you know, that flickering that happens. So, you know, I just decided to keep things simple here. Uh, put down this old, 80s Strictos airplane that uh, uh, Beast Google Hudson uh, did uh, a while back and uh, I, I just always looking for excuses to use uh, his planes as you can probably tell by now <laughs> but uh, it even has I don't know if you noticed but it even has my old logo on the tail which is kind of nice in fact I hear um, that uh, there's a new version uh, 
oh, 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 sorry, there's even an older version of uh, Stricto's Airplane that is supposed to come out soon. And, and it won't be on my channel either, so that's... Uh, I'm not entirely sure where this is going to happen. I think it's going to hit the workshop for sure, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> just stay tuned for that. I'll probably post some screenshots as soon as I, I get my hands on it. But uh, what I'm doing here right now is uh, we moved from the artificial reef. That's a pretty simple build, to be honest. Just putting down some some planes underwater, rearranging the you know the vegetation around them, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you're gonna see it at the at the end uh, with the cinematics. It actually came out real really nice. It looks very realistic, uh, to be honest. Um, but uh, this area right here that I'm working on, I started putting down some of these smaller houses, and uh, they. I mean, in, in in the real you know island, this this part of the of the city, uh, which is right you know right next to the airport, has actually a lot of like larger buildings. It doesn't have like individual houses. So halfway through you know my initial build, I decided to get rid of the tiny houses and start putting down these apartment complexes. That uh, I'm not entirely sure wh what they are for, but it looks like you know. Uh, it's a bit of a mix between a hotel and just, you know, headquarters for like, I don't know, like air airport personnel or m maybe even military personnel. I'm not entirely sure uh, why they have all these uh, buildings here. Maybe they're part of some uh, some sort of like education university scientist uh, research thing. Um, yeah, I'm just guessing here. I couldn't do a whole lot of research about it. And even if I did, I don't think I'll be able to find some information about it. Uh, however, I, I did like this design and I tried, you know, combinations of uh, different clusters of buildings with different uh, styles. So in this case, we have these, uh, you know, this row of uh, buildings here that uh, all share the same uh, style for the roof and I'm just uh, copying and pasting them and also clipping them amongst each other. This is a really a relatively small area. Uh, it's not going to be a huge, huge uh, neighborhood. Just very, very simple and very straightforward. Uh, that uh, double lane road that you maybe saw a second ago, it's actually to the top of the screen right now, but it's, yeah, that one over there. Um, that one is uh, this uh, custom bridge that we put together uh, during the live stream. Uh, the, the whole point of this was to sort of create a bridge uh, using a technique that I've been uh, inspired by, or I mean, it's a technique that was pioneered by uh, Noguchi Mar Maruyama. I've, I mentioned him before, but I want to include the link in the description to uh, the video where he like showcased this technique, which basically allows you to create a bridge with a road segment, but uh, without, uh, you know, having the just the railings on the side. I mean, you basically create a bridge from a road that's sitting on ground and not on a road that, you know, behaves like an actual bridge. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, just take a look at it. I'm gonna include the link in the description, like I said, and you can, you'll understand immediately what I mean. It's a really, really clever technique. And uh, that way you can just customize the bridge however you want. It's really a bit of a hack but it works uh, perfectly well. Uh, it, it definitely takes, you know, a little bit of a trial and error here and there, but it's uh, it's it's pretty straightforward. You shouldn't have uh, much trouble getting it in. And in fact, he he combines it with the um, what you call it, the procedural objects uh, mod, which I haven't tried yet personally. Uh, I think it's like super. It's a, it's a really clever mod. Um, I just fear that. Uh, first of all, you have to keep uh, textures locally, which is, I guess, my biggest pet peeve right now, which is by no means a, a big deal. However, since I tend to share my save games with uh, everyone after I'm done, you know, recording series, yes, I'll be posting CNU so that you can download it and play with it after I'm done, trust me. Uh, I do have to answer that question pretty often, so I might as well just answer it once more here. Um, the fact that, you know, I'll have to pack all these textures in a zip file and put them on my website and then people that don't know how to read descriptions have trouble and have to answer questions it's kind of a pain and on top of that it's i don't know i i i try to create my own structures with uh you know with the limitations of the game that we have right now not that i'm not using you know a ton of mods to get my way around things but uh i don't know i feel like this one is i kind of want want to wait and see uh 
you know, just a little bit uh, what else can be done with it. And then maybe down the road, I'll start using it. Maybe in a different project. It doesn't have to be Sinu. Um, so that's sort of my, 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 my thought process on that at the moment. I might change my mind for sure. I, I, every time I say I'll never do anything, I end up doing that very thing. So, you know, at this point in my life, I learned not to, you know, negate. Is that even a word? Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, anyways, the point is I'm working on a dock here. And um, this uh, is a bit of a, it, it's the dock to this semi-luxury hotel. So th remember, this is a tropical island and uh, there's gonna be tons of these kinds of hotels. Uh, just, you know, kind of like the one uh, Flux put together several episodes ago. And uh, you know, the one I did, well, the one I, I, I did just a few episodes ago as well, uh, on the other side of this very island. This one, however, has a few more pools, looks like a bigger, uh, you know, like a bigger complex. In fact, just sitting right on the beach. And uh, unfortunately, given the time that I had for this episode, I wasn't able to completely finish uh, this this build. It's, it's, I would say it's like 60% detailed. Uh, I definitely want to come back to it, but uh, it, it ended up looking great. Even, you know, as little, you know, detailed as it was, it actually can pass for a finished build, even though I'm, I know that I want to, you know, add a few more things to it. And um, this, okay, so this is a bit interesting here. I've, I've been using these decks that uh, are part of, uh, I think these are vanilla even, um, and they're like commercial. So I'm, I'm clipping them together with these uh, floating, um, I don't know what these are called, like floating docks, I think these are. And I'm creating a bit of a wooden deck, similar to what I did uh, with the previous hotel where I used these like wooden planks uh, just to create a bit of a path. Unfortunately, since these are floating, they are terrain conforming and you really can't raise them up or down. So you're pretty much stuck with whatever your floor uh, situation is. In this case, you can see there's some like little differences in height uh, between uh, each one of the segments, but uh, I kind of look, they kind of looked okay. You know, I played around with the terraforming a little bit, trying to race them and, and figure out a way for them to look nicer, but uh, I just decided to keep them a little bit uneven. That's, you know, a little bit more texture to it. And uh, obviously just uh, spamming with uh, foliage and vegetation around it. Cause uh, this is, I mean, it's spamming in a good way, right? This is like a very jungly type of an environment. And I'm also adding a lot of these uh, planters. Uh, one, uh, you know, one idea that I had for this whole area is to surround the edges of this uh, property with the same type of palm tree. And you're gonna see it more and more in between the cuts. Uh, so I have this fence with the bushes around it and then I'm putting down all these palm trees so that even from afar, you can kind of tell where this, uh, you know, this complex starts and ends. It's a way of like, you know, keeping the same style uh, similar across uh, the entire property. And uh, for the for the inner roads, you can see here that I'm using uh, King Leno's uh, cement uh, sidewalk decals. Uh, I was trying to come up with like different uh, solutions so that, because right now, if, if you only use, you know, the default, uh, the default uh, textures for the road, so you have the concrete road, the gravel road and the dirt road and they're pretty similar and i've been using this technique of adding uh concrete expansion joints to the concrete roads so that they look a little bit more interesting but uh on this one i decided to just pave it with like a different type of asphalt in this case this like light uh i mean you can see it on these sidewalks right here on the screen on both sides of this uh, uh this road and uh i don't know I, I thought it looked nice and it's a nice break and it's just one more um, different type of uh, road, just to keep things a bit more interesting, or at least that's that's my hope. Now, this this part is a little bit hacky too. <laughs> it's a little bit interesting. So, what uh, what's happening right here is, and I noticed this pretty much throughout the entire atoll, uh, is there's these canals that are somewhat underwater. I know there's a proper term for this, but I don't know it just yet. You can let me know in the comments uh, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, imagine all these islands are surrounded by a reef of coral, which uh, means that the water is pretty shallow in terms of depth. Uh, and that prevents, you know, larger ships from uh, ducking 
uh, near the shoreline. So uh, what I notice is that there's these cuts underwater that, you know, prevent uh, or make the, the water a little bit deeper so that uh, these uh, ships uh, can actually get closer to the shoreline. And uh, the, the way I was dealing with this before is just simply by doing terraforming. Uh, but I realized I can actually use keys because these are like like almost perfectly straight cuts underwater and uh, Keys are actually great for that. So I decided to give that a shot and I'm actually pretty happy. So I may uh, Use this technique in other places uh, around the um, Around the, the the whole project. In fact, I may revisit some of the docks we already built so that uh, this design sort of fits uh, better, I guess just makes the, the area look nicer and, uh, you know, it's, uh, like I said before, sometimes when you're dealing with like underwater stuff, uh, I would, I'd ri I highly recommend you get rid of the water by using, uh, if you have the extra landscaping tools, there's an option to like resize the water. Uh, you can bring it back up to whatever level you want. I recommend doing this in pause mode because otherwise it's just going to, everything is going to be freaking out uh, whenever you uh, bring the water up and down and sure it may cause some tsunamis but uh, you know nothing nothing too crazy just uh, you know do it you know a little bit slowly make sure you save your game especially if tsunamis will cause a disaster I have everything turned off on this map so it doesn't really matter to me but uh, in any case talking about what I'm doing on the screen right now so just adding a few details I don't know if you notice but I'm trying to keep a consistent set of colors across all these uh, buildings. So there's a row of blue buildings, a row of green buildings, red buildings, yellow buildings, and so on. And from, from what I can gather on the, you know, satellite imagery, these are like heavily forested areas. It's not a huge neighborhood. It's actually pretty small, but uh, there's a ton of trees and I'm trying to add you know, some level of detail, but not a lot because for the most part, neither you or me will ever see those details. I'm actually trying to optimize the way I detail things because otherwise this series will never be done. And, uh, you know, if I find that there's a section of, of the map that's going to be covered in layers and layers of trees, I try not to, you know, detail like the first person uh, view of uh, such areas, especially because actually my, the first person mod that I have doesn't even work anymore. But uh, that's sort of my strategy. Uh, at the moment. I might change my mind later, but uh, this is what's happening so far. Now, this uh, area that I'm working on right here, this this empty median, concrete median uh, there in between the two uh, lane roads, that's actually still a bit of a working progress because I'm waiting uh, for a uh, prop by the great King Leno. He already kind of promised it on Twitter that he will release uh, some curves, you know, like the, the it's just basically a, a planter with grass in the middle but the problem is that the ones that he put out so far can't be raised you know or lowered using move it so uh since i'm i build this kind of manual like bridge here it the, these props don't really snap to it so i need to like figure out uh or at least wait for those props to come out so i can put more detail uh on that road but as the music plays in the background it's time to put an end to this episode if you enjoyed it and you learned a thing or two please consider giving this video a like that's very much appreciated and if you're new to the channel and haven't already i want to encourage you to go click subscribe that way you're notified immediately after one of my videos comes out and the description you're going to find uh, links to everything I mentioned in this episode, plus a playlist, plus uh, my merch store in case you want to, you know, help support the channel. But that's all for now. I want to thank you all for watching and hope to see you in the next one.